Good evening. Thank you for joining us and welcome to the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. My name is Paul Gallagher and I'm head of the School of Pharmacy. And I'm delighted to have this live session to answer any questions you may have if you're considering graduate entry to the School of Pharmacy here in OCSI. Please email your questions to pharmacy at orcsi.ie so that I can answer those questions over the course of the next 10 to 15 minutes. While we wait for your questions to come in, I'm going to take the opportunity to briefly explain to you the role of the pharmacist in modern healthcare delivery and your educational journey to becoming a pharmacist here in OCSI. Pharmacy has always been about using knowledge and skills in using medicines for the betterment of people's health. Medicines have simply transformed healthcare delivery. 30 years ago, if I had a peptic ulcer, I wouldn't have gone to my GP or to a pharmacist. I would have gone to a surgeon who would have had to have operate on that peptic ulcer. Now, only in the very rare circumstances would I need to go to a surgeon. I can get medicines to both treat the symptoms of the peptic ulcer, but also to cure the peptic ulcer. And now there's a whole new raft of medicines becoming available, large biological medicines such as recombinant proteins, vaccines, gene therapy, cell therapy, that are going to have a very future promise for healthcare delivery and increase the role of the pharmacist. The truth is, however, that medicines are not the golden bullet that Paul Ehrlich, the very famous German physician, scientist and researcher and Nobel laureate imagined. They don't come and, by magic, get rid of the disease and actually leave no side effects. All medicines have benefits and risks. Those benefits can be from cure of a disease, to slowing disease, preventing a disease or symptoms, to reduction of symptoms. And on the far side, as you can see in this slide, there are the risks, inappropriate prescribing and delivery, patient idiosyncratic reaction to a medicine, poor adherence, inappropriate monitoring. The job of the healthcare professional and the job of the pharmacist as the medicine therapy expert is on an individual basis for your patient in a set of circumstances is to very carefully weigh those benefits and risks and make the right therapeutic choice for your patient. That means in RCSI our journey is to make you that expert in medicines. And that expertise in medicines gives you a whole skill set that is valued right across the drug life cycle from drug discovery, true to clinical trials, true to drug manufacture, true to quality assurance, true to dispensing, true to prescribing, true to pharmacovigilance. And with that come a whole raft of career opportunities, from what's very important in Ireland, pharmaceutical bio, pharmaceutical industry, medical appliances industry, but also in terms of hospital pharmacy, community pharmacy, academic pharmacy, regulatory pharmacy, and so on. And what it also gives you is flexibility between careers. For myself, I became a community pharmacist and 20 years later really valued the opportunity that my degree in pharmacy allowed me to come here to RCSI to become an academic pharmacist. So how in RCSI do we give you an educational journey in order to become that medicine therapy expert. We've designed our five-year Master of Pharmacy integrated curriculum with the end in mind. And the end, as I've said, is that you're a caregiver. That you, through your very specific expertise and skills in medicines, can deliver care to patients. But if you're going to do that really effectively, you're going to have to be a very good communicator not only with your clients and patients and other healthcare professionals, but also so that you can be a good collaborator, that you can have collaborative practice. Here in OCSI, we have a singular focus on healthcare, so you will be educated with other people who are becoming healthcare professionals. We have to teach you how to be a professional, 
how to be a scholar so that your practice is always going to be grounded in evidence, how to be a manager, and how to be an effective health advocate for your patients and for wider society. We do that through an integrated curriculum. And by integrated, I mean two things. Integrated at a modular level, at the start in terms of themes like pharmacist, medicine, healthcare, and then further on to a systems organ-based approach, and then towards the end, more complex themes like decision-making and complex care. That's probably different than the degree that you've undertaken to date or are now completing in that we don't do it on a discipline basis. So for instance, our students at present are undertaking a gastrointestinal module. They started in the dissecting room with the alimentary canal, moved on to some physiology, pharmacology and clinical therapeutics and are integrating all of that knowledge around patients with specific GIT disorders so that it's all integrated around patient care and it's done not on a discipline but ultimately on a transdisciplinary level. So that's one aspect of integrated. The other aspect of integrated which is really important for health professional education is that you have structured quality assured professional placements across all five years of the program. We provide those to you. So in second year, you have longitudinal placements in community pharmacies here in the Greater Dublin area where we're located. In third year, you have the opportunity for bedside teaching throughout the hospitals in the RCSI hospital groups and with hospital partners with whom we have established memoranda of understanding. In fourth year, you have an opportunity for a four month or a six month placement in pharmaceutical industry or in a patient-facing role. And then finally, your most important placement, in your fifth year, you have an eight-month clinical placement, at the end of which you sit a professional registration exam, and then you're qualified to apply to be a registered pharmacist in Ireland, and of course, in the European Union. What's also important is not only our curriculum, that it's integrated, that you have professional placements throughout all five years, but that it's delivered in a variety of ways that will suit your learning style. It's not good enough anymore to simply deliver two lectures in lecture theatres. So we have invested a lot of resources in RCSI, in our new academic educational building, so that you can learn in small group settings, in clinical simulation facilities, or here, as you can see, at the bedside in a patient consultation room. So that all of those different ways of our delivering our curriculum suit your learning style so that that learning becomes more meaningful and more focused. So how do you apply? The closing date is shortly, it's the 1st of April, and you apply online and you can do that through the RCSI website. It's a competitive pr process. Prizes for graduate students are sought after competitively. For 2016-2017, we're offering 15 places. We expect to have 45 applicants, so you have a one in three chance. So how do you make yourself competitive? Having a 2-1 or higher in the degree that you have now or that you're about to sit your final exams is important. But it's not the only determinant because you're becoming a healthcare professional and you're dealing with patients. We need at interview to understand something of your motivation. Why do you want to become a pharmacist? Is it because there's 100% employment or there's high starting salaries? Or is it actually because you want to benefit patients' um, journey in healthcare? So you really got to think about your motivation. And I think a very good way to increase your motivation is to have insight. And a good way to have insight is to shadow or track a pharmacist, either in your local community or in your local hospital. We also look to see that you have financial independence. It's a significant undertaking. You've spent at least four years undertaking your current degree. This is a new undertaking for five years. The state isn't going to pay your salary, your tuition fees. They are approximately 11,000 euro per annum. And you have to do that over five years. And it's a busy program. So you can't rely on your financial planning that you can combine a job whilst you're in term 
and at the same time work through all of the activities that you will have to hear. So you have to have robust, independent financial planning so that you can be sure that you can get through the journey successfully and also enjoyable. I've finished what I want to say in terms of my main presentation and we have a number of questions coming in. So thank you for your questions and I'm going to go through those questions now. Our first question is from Neve, who's in Maynooth University, who is studying for a Bachelor of Science in General Science. And Neve has two questions. What subjects should I keep, would be best to keep in my final year to study pharmacy and why? And what grades in these subjects will I be required? Great questions, Neve. In terms of your subjects for an integrated curriculum, you're going to really concentrate, I think, on both the biological sciences, particularly physiology and microbiology, pathology, and also in chemistry. If you can combine both, great. If you have a choice of only one, my sense is, generally speaking, go for chemistry. Chemistry is quite advanced quite quickly. It's combined with the discipline of pharmaceutics. And one thing about an integrated program is that we don't deliver the fundamentals singly. It's combined and integrated, as I said previously, around patient case studies. Chemistry conceptually can be difficult for people if they're doing it for the first time. So my sense is, if you can, combine it with either physiology or microbiology, but certainly chemistry. In terms of grades to make yourself competitive, second class honours, higher classification, uh, 2 1 or higher 1 uh, will make you a competitive application combined with your interview. Question from Alison. Hi, Alison. Alison is a final year student who's undertaking a BSc honours in general nursing. My predicted degree grade is 1 1. Cool. I was wondering whether I'll be eligible for the graduate entry pharmacy. And two, is there any sort of scholarship available in relation to tuition fees? So we'd really welcome your um, application, Alison. One one is outstanding. The fact that you're doing a degree in nursing means that you understand so much about being a healthcare professional and you combine that with the art and discipline of pharmacy makes you an outstanding healthcare professional. Any scholarship available in tuition fees? There are limited scholarships, but you know, since 2008, they're all oversubscribed. And actually, it comes back to what I said earlier about financial independence. Don't plan to undertake a graduate entry program on the basis that your tuition fees might be subvented. They're most likely not to be subvented. Scholarship programs are generally oversubscribed. And you will not have the opportunity, if you are qualified at nursing at that stage, to combine nursing with undertaking your degree in term. One of the feedback we get from lots of our graduate entry students is actually that the workload is generally very high in comparison to their previous degree. And I've had the unfortunate experience as head of school in seeing very bright students who are financially um, working to try to make ends meet and actually get tired of the performance slip. Then they have to repeat exams over the summer and the whole lot actually for what should become a dream actually becomes anything but a dream. Um, so don't bank on scholarships, do financially plan or otherwise it's not going to be a rewarding or enjoyable time for you in college. Another question from Kylie who's in University College Dublin. Is there any possibility of an accelerated course for graduate entry students from a related background? I'm currently in my final year of a pharmacology degree in UCD, very interested in pursuing graduate entry pharmacy but having to complete another five years in college is a huge factor to consider. So I think what Kylie is saying is actually given that she has a degree in pharmacology, is there a possibility of having exemption from one year or more so that it doesn't become a five-year program, it becomes less? One of the differences between a degree such as pharmacy and a degree in pharmacology is that our degree also has to be recognised professionally. So it's accredited in Ireland by the Pharmaceutical Society of Ireland. They don't allow exemptions of years for any students, including graduate entry students. Because one of the advantages of your pharmacy degree is that it gives you free movement throughout the European Union. 
So not only are you eligible to be a pharmacist in Ireland, but in every country in the European Union. And the professional qualification directive is clear. You have to spend five years in education and training to be a pharmacist. So even though you have a degree in pharmacology, you won't get sufficient exemption to take any year off your program. So you need to plan on the basis that it is actually an additional five years. And yes, that is a large undertaking. What I can say from experience from students that we've had from pharmacology actually in UCD and pharmacology from other universities in Ireland and indeed from one student who had a PhD um, in chemistry and came to us uh, some time ago from Trinity College is that there is actual real value in actually studying pharmacology in RCSI within the context of a professional pharmacy degree program. It's actually a very different context than the context that you will have studied it within UCD. And students who have come to us from the graduate entry route, even with qualifications up to PhD, say there is huge value in actually undertaking it within the context of the profession uh, that they wish to become registered in. Emma has emailed a question in from National University of Ireland in Galway. Hi, Emma. Emma's undertaking a third year of an undenominated science degree and she's studying pharmacology and microbiology. Emma would like to know what the entry requirements into the pharmacy program are. So that's 2-1 or higher, Emma. And what subject I decide to major in my fourth year, will it affect my application? It's a competitive process, as we said. So actually thinking about what subject you choose to major in in your final year is a really clever thing to do, Emma. And of the two subjects you've mentioned, pharmacology and microbiology, pharmacology would clearly be the more important subject because pharmacology and basic pharmacology will give you a much better understanding of clinical pharmacology, therapeutics, and of course, prescribing signs, which will much better inform your decision about whether you really want to be a pharmacist and give you a competitive advantage. So my advice is to major in pharmacology if that's a subject um, that you really enjoy. We have Mary from the National University um, of Ireland in Galway saying, is the degree recognised internationally? And is it possible to seek work with this qualification in the UK? That's a really good question. So within the European Union, the degree programme that we offer in OSCSI falls under the Professional Qualification Directive. So you can apply to register as a pharmacist, not only in the UK, but in any of the countries um, of the European Union. That means applying, in the case of the UK, to the General Pharmaceutical Council, getting a letter of good standing from Ireland, and then you're ready to work straight away uh, in the UK. In terms of international recognition, our programme is also accredited by the Malaysian Pharmacy Board, so we take students in from Malaysia and they can directly return and work as a pharmacist in Malaysia. And we also have a large number of international students and our programme is recognised by the Ministries for Higher Education in Kuwait and across at the Gulf Cooperation Council countries. One final question, Justine, is why should I study in RCSI? And, and that's a good question. RCSI, I suppose, has a singular focus on healthcare. Everyone from our chief executive to our dean, um, all our healthcare professionals. So if you've had the large university experience and you now want to focus on healthcare professionals and be in the company of healthcare professionals who either at students or at lecture level, RCSI is a good place to come. In terms of pharmacy, we have the largest number of graduate entry students in our classes. And that's really important if you're a graduate entry student that you come in, you have 14 other colleagues who also have degrees and who are in the same mindset as you. You're paying for your fees, you want to have a very clear focus on becoming um, a pharmacist and it's suitable. Um, so that's really good. Owen from Dublin City University has asked, what are the starting salaries for pharmacists? And it, 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 it varies. Um, at present, it's around uh, 52. 
Um, and 52 is a very uh, competitive salary, probably the highest for any health professional qualifying um, at present. So you're in a very privileged position. But as I said earlier, don't make decisions on starting salaries or privilege or titles. Actually make it on basis of motivation and insight because it's a long journey um, and it's going to be uh, your career. And unless you're satisfied by delivering patient care by using your expertise in medicines, then don't come to pharmacy. But if you are that sort of person and you're bright and you want to have an exciting professional journey as a pharmacist, step forward and come to RCSI. Thank you.